everybody jeff aka g chris here welcome to another g chris reacts the date is currently uh 6 52 p.m on the 2nd of november 2024 uh how are you all doing today it is like i said it's the second day of november over where i am it's actually pretty wet and kind of stormy outside today it's been a pretty stormy uh saturday afternoon or saturday uh here in the city of Kelso, washington as always, if you like what you watch, which I hope you do, feel free to click that subscribe button. It means a lot to me. If you are a fan of Transformers, then you're probably going to like this React. Uh, normally, I I try to stay away from 99% of everybody in the fandom of Transformers. Uh, this goes f established people, established personalities along with people on uh, like Facebook when it comes to YouTube honestly every every person I've come across or that I've seen they just they they, they seem to be so freaking preachy and it, it, it's annoying it's annoying and 99% of all of them they all want you to buy toy hacks Use their code, get 15% off, toy hack stickers, yada, yada, yada. I, I don't care. I, I really don't care, you know. And it, it just makes me feel like that they don't really care about Transformers, it's in Transformers itself and that they're more interested in just making a quick buck by selling garbage stickers, basically, you know. So, like I said, with the exception of one Facebook group that I talk to people on a on a pretty routine basis, I leave everybody else alone. I, I, I don't feel the need to really talk to that many people in the fandom because when I got back into collecting Transformers, uh, when I got back into collecting Transformers, I would go like on various Facebook groups and I'd get I would give my opinion, you know, and it's my opinion. I would, for example, let's just say that I would say that uh, I like the clones from Titans Return. You know, Fast Clash, Cloud Raker, uh, Pounce and Wingspan, those guys. I actually love those figures. Oh my god, I, you would not believe the response I would get. I would get everything from passive, oh, good for you, go get lost, to literally people saying I should, I should end my life because those figures were garbage and because of that 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 those interactions kind of turned me into like this the way i am now when it comes to this fandom i just i yeah i i basically take a attitude of you know like whatever you know with the exception of one facebook group like i said that i am pretty active in because they're all from my area so yeah, so, it, you know, besides that, but anyway, 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 before I get on to all, get on to the point of this video, uh, since I decided to halt a uh, review of this little tyrant here, because this figure just, this figure is just so, uh, it's the Legacy United, or not Legacy, it's the Studio Series A6, sorry, steel job, just because this figure is so poor and everything. And I would get upset every time I look at it. I decided to forego the review until a later date. But I did. I do want to give you guys a review. So I am actually going to give myself a little bit of a break. And I am reviewing this little this little type here. This is the uh, Crim Zeke. <laughs> it's an accessory that came with the Refractor Reconnaissance Three Pack. Yes, I am actually doing a review of this guy. <laughs> But yeah, I I got the uh, I got I got a lot of the resources already uh, assembled, so I'm going to do the review of this guy tomorrow. But back to what I was saying, though, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I just I just don't really pay much attention to what the established uh, YouTubers say when it comes to Transformers. Because I, I don't hear, when I hear them talking, I don't hear them talking like, I it's not exactly how you hear it, you know? Like, 
I hear them talking, but then I internally, I uh, internally, I kind of hear that them speak differently. You know, instead of the, me hearing them say, "Oh, I love Transformers," I love Crimzeek. I I think that Frenzy or Rumble or however you want to call this guy, I think that he's a great figure. Instead of that, I just hear. Here's a link. Here's uh, here's a link to to toy hacks. Here's you know for stickers. You want stickers? Your your figure is nothing without stickers. Stickers, and I'm like, you know what? Get lost. Get lost. I don't care about stickers. I like my figures the way they if they are. But I don't. I, that's why I don't really have uh, a very positive opinion of them. But I was on YouTube a little bit ago while I was having dinner and. I saw a video from our boy JT Omega. He here's ten of the of Transformers biggest disappointments in 2023. So I figured, you know what? I think I will take a look at this video and see what he, you know, see what he has to say. Uh, you know, it, it's a top ten list basically. So you get what you get. It's it's his opinion. Like I have my opinions and everything. But yeah, I just, I just want to see what he has to say. So we're going to get over to that right about now. Okay, so before somebody... I know somebody's always going to say, well, Jeff, why don't you just reach out to them? They may be nice people. Call me cynical. Call me cynical, ladies and gentlemen. And that's okay if you do. It, it is totally cool with me if you call me cynical. I don't think people, especially when they are established YouTubers... They don't want friends, especially if they have contracts. If they have contracts, they want you to buy whatever they're selling. So, you know, I'm not going to fall for that game. If they're like, you know, Jeff, talk to that person. They may be cool. Yeah, and then I'll say, hey, my name is Jeff. Oh, your name is Jeff. Hey, nice. Would you like a coupon for my, for my, uh, fuck, whatever they, they, they have. Uh, G Fuel, for example. I don't know of any YouTubers that do Transformers have G Fuel. But it, it, they don't want friends. They basically want people to buy their product. They have friends off, off of the internet. They only want people online to buy their product. Yes, I'm cynical. Call me cynical if you want. But that's the way I view people, you know, that are especially YouTubers that are established, you know. But anyway, so let's pull up the video, shall we? So, he, he, like I said, this is from JT Omega, and this video goes roughly uh, about 24 minutes. So let's get started, shall we? Before we begin, thank you very much to Aaron E for joining the Patreon campaign over at patreon.com forward slash TJ Omega. Thank you very much for the contribution to help keep this channel afloat, keep it alive. You genuinely do not know how much I mean it when I say that Patreon keeps this channel going. Oh, I'm pretty sure that he gets, I'm pretty sure that this guy gets, uh, oh, gets a lot of, uh, ad revenue. He, let, let's see here. Let's, let's actually do a little bit of research, shall we? So let's do this. There we go. I'm just curious exactly how much, how many subscribers this guy half. Let's see here. 54,000 subscribers. 54,000 subscribers. And then let's see here. Uh, let's go to here. Let's go to here. Uh, analytics. No. Earn. Here we go. To, to uh, get caught, to get uh, eligibility for page ads, you need a thousand people. He has fifty-four thousand people, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pretty sure that he's doing damn well when it comes to uh when it comes to uh support. Patreon is just a side hustle for, for people like him. Don't make don't fall for the whole uh you know whole shtick of well you you guys are making it for me. He probably makes he probably makes some money from Patreon, but a lot of it's from uh from YouTube. Don't 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 be fooled by what people say. He he is probably living nicely, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you very much to everyone who allows me to continue being the funny YouTube toy man. Uh so 
he would still be here doing commercial uh doing the not commercial doing these videos even if he wasn't getting anything because he still when i say gets anything i'm talking about patreon he still gets ad revenue don't don't be fooled ladies and gentlemen that's all speak that's all speak he is basically buttering everybody up it is a top 10 time or a here's 10 around here because these aren't in any particular order it's a little bit early to be throwing around something of the year you know best slash worst of 2023 because we still got a few weeks left but the truth is I don't think there's anything Transformers can do in the next three weeks that's going to be any more disappointing than the t than what we're talking. Oh, you'd be shocked what a business can do. Businesses can flop and go bankrupt before a star dies. You know. So in order to actually cover bases and make sure we have time for it all, we got to start now. So welcome. Right now, ladies and gentlemen. ...in Transformers for the year of 2023, and we are going to start in the toy department where i had a grievance everyone had because all of us had to okay everybody had grievance i want to hear this stupid little rubber band figure thing these, these things these these well i never bought these figures so i didn't have a grievance so his his argument that everybody had a grievance is factually wrong factually wrong i i it drives me nuts when people will say everybody likes this or everybody does not like that you don't speak for me, dude. You don't speak for me. And when people say something like he just said, well, everybody had a grievance. You're speaking for me. Don't. Do not speak for me. I hate it when people do that. Thing that should work, you know? It should, you know, just flip inside out and work. It doesn't work. None of these things worked. I mean, I figured, like, I got the Cheetor, and I hated it. And I thought, maybe it's just the Cheetah. Maybe it's just beasts are hard to do this way. Maybe one of the cars would work better, but I didn't see anyone defend these. Okay, that I'll be honest, that figure looks cheap as cheap as all get go. <laughs> Super awkward toys that didn't look good in either mode and didn't feel good to transform. I felt like I was gonna break it at any time. So and yeah, the shelves were cluttered with these things. I have no idea what they were thinking, uh, but it was frustrating you know when i when i'm looking for new stuff to come in i'm actually looking for interesting product and this is the stuff that's littering the shelves i mean as far as gimmick toys yeah dead on arrival at number nine we have to think back to all of the reissues that are being done at walmart and while the g1 reissues are continuing did anyone even notice that the beast wars ones just kind of stopped I, I saw them over at Walmart, but I never bought any. Uh, my whole mentality is to constantly move forward. Yeah, it's nice if you really want these uh, throwbacks, that, you know, that they're there for you to buy. But to me, I don't show any interest in them because of the fact that by buying something like this, you're kind of moving back in the way of articulation and all that stuff. These are older figures. You're not getting, like, modern uh modern articulation if i remember correctly I, th these are just basically re-releases you're not buying something that is like a new mold or anything if i understand uh these uh releases correctly boggles the mind like why wouldn't you do that for beast wars so you could re-release major characters so you could re-release the more popular trans metals so you could do the more classic characters like dinobot why would you not go the extra mile here the way you did with previous lines and i'm assuming that's just because beast wars isn't as marketable as g1 because nothing is point being it's g1's popular dude that, that i i like beast wars but for me my bread bread and butter is g1 anniversary but you would think rise of the beast would put in all the nostalgia you needed to get this to take off and in the year of rise of the beast they had one figure of a character who wasn't in the show and that is how the reissue line dies uh with the meagerest of whimper i could imagine here's one we're going to be talking about a lot more later because i went in with curiosity and immediately regretted it uh, so, Transformers Earthspark Expedition is a thing that exists. That's the disappointment. That's that's the whole disappointment. Earthspark got a trans got an actual video game. Okay, so it's a video game. 
uh just so everybody knows i did not buy any of these figures i don't watch the show it looks too kiddy for my likes i i am burned out on childhood you know transformer like you know where humans are the uh are like basically they're like the centerpiece uh where it's like buddy buddy comedy you know that's why i didn't that's why i didn't watch uh transformers one i saw that initial uh trailer and i'm i that thing did me in that did me in i did not want to see it people are like oh jeff that was just the trailer the video the movie's actually i don't care i don't care i'm at the point now i you know I understand that they want to make content that is geared towards kids. That's right. That's it right. But they should also do content that is geared towards adults. And what do I want as an adult? I want, I want violence. I want utter destruction. It doesn't, I don't care if it's like an else world story or if it's just like one single movie. I don't care. But I want an, a hard R-rated movie. I know that'll never happen. That'll never happen. But I want literally a hard R-rated movie where you have Transformers just destroying everybody. Or each other, I should say. And people go like, like oh, they had that Bayverse. Bayverse revolved around humans. I don't, I don't want humans. I want Genocidal robots killing each other. Oh, Jeff, Autobots are actually the good guys. They're both bad guys. Decepticons and Autobots, they're both. They Both groups have done horrendous things to each other. I want literally a story where it's basically, basically the, the, whole, the whole lesson is that war will ultimately kill everybody. I literally want the the end of the movie to be Optimus Prime and Megatron battling each other. For all we know, Optimus Prime splits Megatron's head in half with the Energon axe. Megatron's dead, but at the end of the fight, Optimus also suffered a life-threatening injury, and he dies. Everybody's dead. Everybody's dead. Lesson, don't fight. You know, like, I want hard R. I want violence. I want blood or, or inner John. I want something adult. And that's why I refuse to watch Transformers 1 because it, it, it still looks like a, it looks like a Pixar movie, to be honest. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm done with Pixar. I'm, Pixar is for little kids, in my opinion. I want hard R. Okay, great. It was made by a company known for low quality shovelware that handles a lot of C rank, you know, franchise. Then why are you so upset about it if you already knew that that's what you were going to be getting with this game? Franchise just having no luck whatsoever in the video game department. You know, um, I played about 10 minutes of this game. Um, and I encountered so many things that just like made me go, this like made me shake my head that I, I had to turn it off because I decided there's no way I can actually continue playing this without recording it and getting my reaction. I didn't even make it out of the tutorial area before I made this decision. It's that bad and it deserves so much more. You know, when you have such good source material, why does it come out like this? I don't know. I don't know. I have uh, I have some hope that we're finally in, in line for a good Transformers video game. Because it's <laughs> rare and far between. The, the last best uh, Transformers game was uh, Fall War and Fall of Cybertron from like the early 2010s. Rise of the Beast toy line because while it made a lot of weird decisions and it made a lot of really weird products... Some of them are actually amusing. Some of them are actually pretty cleverly engineered. But it's the line you couldn't find that I'm kind of frustrated over, and that was the core series. So this one isn't entirely Hasbro's fault. When Paramount delayed the movie by a year, this line got held up. This was supposed to be what we got uh, during... 
Okay, so when it comes to the Rise of the Beast, I watched. I think it was about like half of that uh, movie. It was on Paramount Plus. I think it's still there. I watched half of it, and then you know, I actually had to stop watching it because of work. I was. I started watching it like late one evening, and then I was. I figured I'd go back and watch it, and I never finished it. I actually bought one of the uh, Rise of the Beast figures. It's a Studio Series a, a Studio Series Optimus, Optimus Primal. It's one of the. It's a big figure. Uh, yeah. So it's like I, I, I at least gave Rise of the Beast a, a chance. You know, I do. I think it's a it's a horrendous movie. No, it's better than the Bayverse movies, and sure as hell is a lot better than Transformers One, whatever whatever that thing is. You know, so yeah. But I only got like one of those figures. I'm still thinking about getting more of the Rise of the Beast through Studio Series. I want the Studio Series figures, actually. Raj better than the Studio Series because it's more fun to transform. And the Air Razor is brilliant. It's a fantastic figure. It's not Hasbro's fault that all the release schedules clashed like this. But it doesn't help things that, uh, like the over glut of movie product that came out for Rise of the Beast was made worse by the fact that a line was supposed to come out a year ahead, now had to get crammed into the middle of all of it. And it's a shame because if this line had been able to continue and do more characters, I think it would have produced a lot of fun toys. And instead, it's just kind of this weird thing they did in the middle with a confusing name because we already have something called Core Class. I don't know. It was upsetting. And the more times I got to experience these toys and realize, hey, they're actually pretty nice for their, for their price, the more I was upset over this all happening. So it makes the list. So can someone tell me what happened to Masterpiece this year? I mean, I thought they were supposed to be in some kind of rebuilding period after Hound and trying to regain everyone's faith in the, in the franchise. But it really feels... Okay, so I, I'm going to just uh, mute this por por uh, portion right here. I I don't have any Masterpiece figures. Uh, I rarely ever see them at stores over here in Kelso, Washington. I, the only time, I think I've seen a total of like three Masterpiece figures. And they were uh, over at Target. And two of them were the same figure, and the other one was... Uh, was a different one. I can't. Re I don't know what their names are because they were all Bayverse uh, characters. One, the two, the one I saw twice was like a big helicopter-like guy. I, I don't know what his name is. And then the other one was, I think it was one of the construct cons. Possibly, it looked like it had a tail, but it had a, like a grabber on it. I can't recall what its name was. But yeah, I, I just not really ever been interested in masterpiece. I'm happy with mainline. You know, if you like. Masterpiece, hey, that's cool for you. It's just not really for me, though. Very disappointing Easter basket of misery. Meanwhile, the, the Masterpiece line, which really still needs to work on its good graces, just kind of seems to be in neutral right now. I mean, even Jetfire had reports of some QC issues. And, of course, it's a white plastic figure, so... Wait, isn't Masterpiece supposed to be, like, the best of the best? If they're supposed to be the best of the best, why are they having QC issues? I mean, at least, like, even Movie Masterpiece was really limited this year. Uh, they got Bone Crusher out at the last minute, and Bone Crusher's great. But then again, they also just kind of... Okay, hold on. Let's actually do a quick research here. Because uh, I think Bone Crusher is the one that I may have heard. Uh, hold on, let's... Hold on one second. Okay, hold on. There you go. Uh, Transformers Masterpiece Bone Crusher. Yeah, I think it's this guy. Here, hold on, let me. Yeah, it looks something like that. Let's see here. Ah, it's, yeah, it's that thing. It's a, it looked like a little claw thing. Or, but yeah, it's Bone Crusher. Uh, it was that guy, and then let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Maybe I can find the other one. Yeah, let's see. Uh, trans Masterpiece. Oh, I can't recall what the name of the character was. Uh, are these even Masterpiece? 
Hold on. Um, it looked like he his like the blades and every, the the blades became like his backpack or something. Let's see here. Uh, Transformers masterpiece. Uh, hell. Helicopter. Hmm. I'm wondering if it's this guy. Well, let, let's do target. Also target. Okay, there. Uh, let's see here. Nah, not Jeff. I was a helicopter. Let's see here. Let's pull up a. Jeez. God, I, I don't even know what I'm looking for. Hmm. Okay. All I know is that his blades. I think his blades were on the back. That's all I can really recall. But yeah, I, I've just never really been into masterpiece. I'm, I'm happy with uh, with mainline. Light on repaints, and it's disappointing in a line where everything used to be, you know, five star out of five star out of five star, and you know we used to have a pretty consistent release schedule for it. it just feels like the whole line's floundering, you know, and all of the QC issues from the couple years ago. I still don't feel like they've made up for, you know, it's just knowing where it came from. It's just kind of disappointing to see the line just mostly just there. At number five, here's a topic we covered in an entire video dedicated just to itself, and it is still confusing to me to this day. Where is Hound and Hatchet? So now this is in an interesting uh on some executive's desk at hasbro that that's my best guess i i knew who, i know who hound is i watched the very first michael bay uh movie transformers movie i think that hound was in that one but i know who who the hound is in the transformers michael bay movies i don't i don't know who hatchet is i'm guessing that this this thing here is hatchet it looks it looks like a, a dog with the predator head but I, my my guess is executive's desk, kind of like how uh what's his name uh ha yeah well hound uh was on some rumored to be on some executive's desk the hound from Legacy United that four pack land do they go back into their respective lines or are they still going to be exclusive to Target I don't know I genuinely don't know now things have gotten weird now things have gotten really weird with these. And it's already weird that Hasbro won't even acknowledge that even though we've seen these pictures for over a year, they still will not say that they exist. Which leads me to wonder if something even worse happened to them that they're not telling us. Super odd. Super odd, and yeah, I'm just like begging. Like, anyone, tell me these toys are real at this point. Oh, they're probably real, it's just that Hasbro has a weird way of uh, releasing these figures when you're least, ex least expecting it. 2024 is the year of Hound and Hatchet. Who knows? So I mentioned one of the most disappointing things of the year is the fact that Earthspark got a really bad video game. Well, it's not the only video game for Transformers that had bad news this year. In fact, Reactivate had absolutely no news. Okay, here's my theory. I think, honestly, I think the game's dead. I think the game, I think the game was actually pretty close to being released, but Hasbro did not like the final product. So uh, they probably said, okay, can the prod, can the game, and the people, the, the company that developed this game, whatever company it was, I can't recall, they probably didn't have enough time to ultimately uh, release a new, or make a new game from, from scratch. So I think that they basically quietly shuttered, uh, shuttered this game, you know, that they canceled the release. And I think it, I think that they jumped the bullet when it came to releasing those two two packs of the reactivate figures. By the way, with the exception of Optimus Prime, the other three figures, uh Soundwave, Scott, uh, Je uh Starscream and Bumblebee, those figures were garbage. Those figures were garbage. And the uh it looks like that they are actually re-releasing Bumblebee in the Gamer Edition. Which makes me think that if they're releasing that figure in the Gamer Edition by itself, 
I think that they just canceled the game, canceled the game, and they're trying really hard to make any sort of profit off of that, off of that IP as possible. The engine. Uh, so okay, fine. It's gonna perform and look nicer, but it does mean waiting even longer. And get, I don't, I don't think it's coming out. I don't think. I think it was canceled. That's just me though. Call me extremely cynical. Call me negative. Whatever you will. But I, if if they had anything, we would have known about it by now. You know, I I almost worry that this is going to be our silk song. You know, this is going to be the one that like we know it exists. We know someone's working on it, but we don't know what state it's in, and we don't know when it'll actually come out. So hopefully they actually do update. They say they're going to update us in twenty twenty four, but at this point, it's looking a little bit grim. Speaking of Transformers get absolutely no support, is it just me that's upset by what they are doing with Earthspark right now? No, because I never bought that crap. I never bought that that garbage, so it doesn't really bother me, you know, like like I said, I I like Mainline because it still pulls at my heart a little bit with the G1. But Non non mainline stuff, these spin-off things, I don't care. I don't care. I, I just don't. Like I said, I am at the point now I want violence. I want robots destroying each other brutally. I you know, something something along the line of like Michael Bay, but not Michael Bay, and no freaking humans. I, I don't care if you have like oh god, I can't recall what that one uh Autobot's name was I think it was supposed to be like Wheeljack or something, but it was not Wheeljack. It was renamed something. And, and one of the one of the subconscious kabam, you know, like showed no mercy, <laughs> showed no mercy to this robot, this Autobot that looked like he had a beard. By the way, why do why do the Transformers have hair and beards? <laughs> they're they're robots. But anyway, yeah, something along that line. I, I, Megatron walks over to walks over to, you know, Prowl, who's crawling with one arm left. He's crawling on the ground trying to get away. Megatron walks over with his fusion cannon and kapow, blows his head off. That's what I want in a movie. I want no holds barred. I want. I. I, I just like I said. I want something that you would be ashamed. To take your kids to go see. We know they could do better, but for one re one reason or another, they just don't, and it gets frustrating. It's frustrating as well that the entirety of season one is now out, and there's no way of getting a consistent set of Terrans. There's no full figure for hashtag at all. I think all she has is a Tacticon, and that is it. And, it, and Tacticons don't sell well, so good luck finding her, because she's not Wave 1. You know, she's supposed to be the largest one. There's no large toy of her. You know, there's no way of, like, it's so frustrating. To have such a good cast of characters and have no way for them to look good on a shelf together is infuriating. And it's the kind of thing that I don't see Hasbro going back and doing later. You know, you see we have exactly one R.I.D. 2015 character in a modern line. That's Strongarm. We have exactly one rescue bot in a modern line, and that is Chase. How long do you think it's going to be before they actually do a full set of scale Terrans? I don't think they're going to do it at this point. And then even... And I could care less. I could care less. Just a repaint of his Cyberverse toy, which doesn't look like Earthspark Starscream. You know, uh, Breakdown is getting a one-step changer that's just a repaint of Wheeljack. It's crazy to me that the toy, the car, the toy line based on the cartoon used to be the main thing they focused on, and now it's an afterthought. And you wonder why the toys never sell, because you never make the toys the way they could be. Kids aren't dumb. They're not going to Oh, I, I disagree. I disagree. I think kids are very fucking dumb. I, I I think that they are dumb as brick or dumb as dirt. Sorry, dumb as dirt. They're dumb as dirt when it comes to uh, kiddie shows. You show a kid something sparkly and you will have their attention for 30 minutes to an hour. 
don't try to act like, oh, kids are not that dumb. BS, they're not that dumb. They are very dumb. I should know I was a kid. I was one of the dumbest kids around. Toys. You know, collectors aren't either. So you end up making products that don't work for anybody. It's a great cartoon with great characters, and I want to buy great representations of those characters, and I want Hasbro to actually show they care about them. But so far, I... Hasbro cares about your money. That's all they care about, dude. You'll, you'll learn that as you get older. So I would be remiss if we did not mention that series as well, that, you know, toy line, movie, whatever. However, we're going to be talking about the fact that the movie itself learned absolutely nothing. Critics liked Bumblebee a lot more than they liked a lot of the Transformer movies. The audiences liked Bumblebee. Now, I'll be honest, I did like Bumblebee. Even though Bumblebee had humans in it, I'm not sure what it is, but Bumblebee just hit it for me. I'm not sure what it is. And that's the one thing I'm kind of confused about with this. I'll have to go back and rewatch the first half plus the, the second half that I never saw. Is Rise of the Beast supposed to be like, uh, a, is that a sequel to Bumblebee? Is it a prequel to Bumblebee? Exactly what is Rise of the Beast? Here, let me, let me actually, here. That, uh, why am I asking this question? I can actually just do this. Here, this, pull up a browser. Okay, hold on, there we go. Is Transformers Rise of the Beast a sequel to Bumblebee. Uh, let's see here. D -d -d okay, it's a standalone sequel. Uh, this was, this case. So it's a standalone sequel to Bumblebee. Okay. And a prequel to Transform. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, that may be why I uh, never finished watching it. Maybe somehow I was. Uh, here, let me, in case you can't see it, here, let me, let me do this. Oh, crap. Maybe somehow I subconsciously knew that this was uh, a prequel to the Michael Bay garbage. Oh, my God. But basically, the short answer is that it was a standalone sequel to Bumblebee and, and, the, and the prequel to the 2000. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Maybe it's a good thing I stopped halfway through. Way more than they liked the most recent Transformer movies. Was it a billion dollar blockbuster? No, but it did decent for what it was, and it had people actually excited for what the next Transformer movie was going to be. When they bring back Optimus, when they bring back a bigger cast, and they actually take what they learned from Bumblebee and apply it to a brand new movie, and actually see what they can do from there with no Michael Bay involvement and actually doing something fresh. This poor guy thinks Michael Bay is not involved at all. This poor guy, Michael Bay may not have, have his name on the credits, but he is probably there in some sort of con con uh, consult role, basically. Same movie, same formula, but now there's dragons. Same movie, same formula, but now there's beasts. MacGuffin plot, big overblown battle scenes, Exact same setup, kill off all the villains at the end because we don't want to invest in our villain cast anymore. Just point after point. And this is why they should do a hard R-rated movie. That way you can literally just kill off everybody. It, like I said, have it be like one movie where literally there is nobody left at the very end. Well, maybe maybe, maybe Crimzeek or somebody that can be left. But literally, just have an r raid where they just kill everybody. And then you wouldn't have to worry about investing in uh, characters because they'd all be dead. <laughs> After Point, you know, it just became another Michael Bay movie with a different director and audiences didn't turn out for it. Worst performing movie of any Transformer movie so far. You know, no surprise. You did the same. You did the exact same formula that everyone got tired of at the last night, and you expected it to work now. The movie learned nothing from Bumblebee. For all the good graces Bumblebee earned us, amongst fans and critics, and for the success Bumblebee had after the last night tanked. Okay, here's my theory. Paramount 
Hasbro, they are very, they, 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 for some reason, have a hard on for Michael Bay. So they, they decided that they're going to have Michael Bay step back. And then uh, when Bumblebee came out and earned so much, you know, applause, they figured that it was rejuvenated. Well, it's, it, we got a second win. Quickly, let's get Michael Bay back in there. Michael Bay is never gone. Michael Bay is like a rash on Transformers. He he will be there even if it's not in uh in a credited role, he's always going to be there. If you ha- here here let me tell you something. If you have a a Transformer, a Bumblebee that does not speak or you have to have Optimus Prime with flames on his body or you have 10,000 transformers that you don't know who the hell they are because they don't look like anybody that you're aware of with the exception of like Optimus Prime and uh, Bumblebee because they're coloring odds are it's a Michael Bay production it may not have his name on the goddamn credits but it's still a Michael Bay production I I like to equate Michael Bay, to, there, if you're a fan of wrestle, professional wrestling, you'll know who this person is. There is a guy named Vince Russo. Towards the end of his uh, professional career in professional wrestling, uh, Vince Russo was what is known as like a script writer. He wrote the scripts. He was a booker. Vince Russo's name became so toxic for television uh for TV uh, companies or, or uh, TV channel companies, whatever you want to call them. It got to the point that some of his employers, uh, like Impact Wrestling t- slash TNA, they ended up having to literally kind of act like he was fired. But they kept going to him for uh, suggestions on how to run the company. That's the same thing they're doing with this. With Transformers, like I said, if you have a, if if you have Bumblebee and he's not freaking talking, he has to use a fucking radio to 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 talk. Or you have Optimus Prime literally decked out in flames. Odds are it's a Michael Bay decision, and they got nothing for it. They just went back to the exact same movie. And got the exact same result as the last time. And I guarantee you, if there is a Transformers 8, and I don't mean Transformers 1, I mean Transformers blank of the blank, whatever the next one's going to be, I guarantee they're going to try the exact same formula again, and it's going to do even worse, and this franchise is in trouble, and I hate it. The franchise so has been in be trouble one forever. On this list? What could possibly be more in Transformers than how uh, Rise of the Beast turned out. A movie I actually like. Okay, I can't wait to hear this. Thing wrong that they could have with it. Well, because there is one thing that was just super frustrating for every Transformer collector, and that is the. Con- Do oh my god, he did it again. Do not speak for me. I, I, I it drives me nuts when so, when somebody just makes a blanket blatant or blanket claim. Everybody liked this. Everybody hated that. Do not speak for me. That 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 drives me nuts. It's like when somebody says, "Oh, Jeff said this." Oh, don't even freaking say that I said something. If if somebody is saying that I said something, you come to me and see if I actually said that. Continued issue with distribution. On screen right yeah, now. Yeah, I can is agree. Th- I can agree. From Transformers United. You can currently buy this on Amazon for normal price, and you will actually get it at normal Amazon shipping times. You know, about five days or so. It's not too bad. For a toy that was supposed to be coming out two months from now. Oh, by the way, I have both that figure, the Voyager class uh, Thundertron, and I also have the uh, three-pack that came with Calcitron and Nightshade. I think that's his name. Uh, from Walmart's part of the uh, Star Star Raiders collection. Yeah, I have both of those figures, though. And this continues to be a problem. You pre-order something that's not due till October, and it comes out in July. 
See, I have a lot of expenses in July because I have a convention that I go to every Whose fault is that, though? Sounds like poor uh, financial responsibility, if you ask me. If you, you should, you should automatically know that if you pre-order something, there should always be a chance that it's going to arrive early. It could either arrive early or it could arrive really late, like how, uh, oh God, what's the name? Uh, the Bludgeons and uh, a Trigger Con. Uh, not Windsweeper, not Crankcase. God, I can't recall what his freaking name is right now. It's, oh God. I'll be right back. I'll get the figure. Hold on. Instead of actually getting the toy, I went and I got the box. It is Ruckus I'm referring to, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this two pack was actually supposed to have been out at the same time that the other two packs were that were part of this set. So they can, you, you should expect to figure, you know, either come in early or in this guy, this case, come late. It's always a risk that we pay, uh, play or take, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to pre ordering a year. So when things like that hit my bank account, I'm not expecting that kind of screws up my vacation plans. Just oh no, oh no, dude, I, I know I'm going to get flack for this, and I hope I do. It's your decision. It's your decision. You choose to pre-order a lot of stuff. You choose to go to conventions. It's your choice. It isn't like somebody's like, it isn't like somebody's literally hog tying JT Omega and goes, okay, you're coming with us to this convention. It's your choice. It's your choice. It sounds like you need financial responsibility if you ask me. Just a wee little bit. You know, and this happens to a lot of people. I'm expecting to pay for this big masterpiece. You know, I'm no, not masterpiece, but like commander class toy. I'm expecting to drop 90 bucks on a commander class toy in November. Oh, no. Hey, uh, you got bills in August? Too bad. You're 90 bucks short now. And when you're buying whole waves, you know, I am currently sitting on a whole list of pre-orders that just came in and they're coming in at the same time and... They weren't supposed to be in for another. Like I said, you should just anticipate it. You should just anticipate it. You should anticipate the, the idea that, for example, our boy Frenzy here. Can the camera get him there? You should just anticipate the idea that Frenzy could come in late or he could come in early. It's a risk we take when we pre-order, dude. Now... There were a couple figures that I had to that I had pre-ordered that I ended up having to cancel. And before somebody says, "Oh, so you got you need better financial planning, Jeff?" No, it wasn't like that. And I'll actually get those figures for you. Hold on one second. Okay, I am back. Hold. On. I'm going to switch over to this real quick, and then I am actually going to turn off the green screen. There you go. Uh, because the, the camera will work a little bit better without the green screen. But anyway, so I had to cancel. A couple pre-orders and like i said before somebody says oh you f you hypocrite jeff you need better fight it wasn't that at all it wasn't that at all and uh, those two figures were first one was the studio series uh gamer edition no sorry oh this is studio series bumblebee uh movie frenzy and the other one is the studio series gamer edition Ratchet. Now you're wondering, well, Jeff, why did you have to cancel those pre-orders if you didn't have, if you don't have financial issues? And here's here's the reason. Now, even though I have a driver's license, I hate to drive. I I I, I just hate to drive. It, it's like it is like a it's a curse for me. I just don't like driving. Uh, these figures were actually supposed to both come out. Are supposed to you know release in i think uh this one was like late november and this one was supposed to be in december well they both got moved uh moved ahead to i think it was like early to mid october 
and uh, I when I'm working. So when I'm at work, I work uh, the last couple of days of August, from August all the way through mid June. So I normally have all my pre-orders go to an Amazon locker because I pre-order through Amazon. And these two figures were supposed to be coming out at the time that I was going to be on vacation. So it would not bother me to go and pick these uh, figures up, you know, from the locker. However, that, like I said, they were moved ahead. And the problem is that they were supposed to both both uh, arrive on a Monday. Well, the thing is, I don't get off work until uh, it gets dark, you know, especially this time of the year. I don't want to risk, because I, I, I like public transportation more than driving. So, I, if I was to go and pick these up, it would be like pitch dark, and I don't want to risk walking on the side of the road and getting hit by a car. So, uh... I decided to cancel those two pre-orders. And here's the weird here's the weird thing. This guy was supposed to arrive on a Monday. I canceled the pre-order and I and when I uh I look I looked the figure up on Amazon and they could actually do a next day delivery. So I canceled it on a Saturday when I found out that it was gonna be delivered on a Monday. I uh, looked at the order and they could overnight it to me a new order on Sunday. So it's like really I wasn't gonna get my pre-ordered version pre-order copy until Monday, but since I canceled that pre-order and I did a whole new order, I got it on the next day. Yeah. And I had it shipped here to to my residence. So that that that's why I canceled these two figures. It's just not because of money, but because I don't want to risk getting hit by a car because I prefer to walk and take public transportation. I do you have a car, Jeff? Yes, I have a car. I just don't. I don't like to drive, to be honest. I I, I drive. The only time I drive prefer to drive is like when it's early in the morning and it's light out. If it's dark, I prefer not to drive. I prefer not to drive because there's still a lot of cars out there. I like to drive when I have basically the road to myself. That way, I know nobody will hit me. Basically. Okay, but yeah, it, it literally seems like when it comes to JT Omega, he basically has an issue with uh, with financial responsibility. And if that's the case, then he really should look at what's more important, going to conventions or buying Transformers. You know, you can't really have both of your... If you're having this kind of problems like, oh, gee whiz, these figures are going to come out... And it's gonna put me ninety plus dollars in the hole. Maybe you should re refigure what is most important to you, dude. For two or three months, I've got a really big expense coming up in January. I didn't need this now. It's whose problem is that? Is that my problem? Is that Hasbro's problem? It's his problem. Like I said, not my fault, dude. Not my concern. I didn't need these pre-orders filling now. You know, and I know it's just cancel it and move on. But, you know, also, I kind of do this professionally. So I do need to get them. When Whose problem? I don't care if it, he has a business or he wants to go. He, he basically sounds like he wants his cake and he wants to be able to eat it, too. You need to decide what's most important. Conventions or buying Transformers? Because apparently you're not making enough money to do both, dude. If you're if you're literally having to be like, okay, Thundertron is coming out in three months. And if this figure is coming out in four months, I should I should have enough money to buy them down the road. And then they get moved. Oh my god, no, I'm I'm gonna be ninety dollars. Dude. You're a business owner. You should know how finances work. You're a business owner. You said so yourself. You should know how this works. I make sure I before I even 
I plan my finances out months in advance. That way, when I pre-order this guy and I pre-order this guy, I know that even if these figures come in early, I'll still have, you know, I'll still be able to make, to pay all my bills without any problems. I can place these orders without any problems. It literally sounds like you just need to rework your business strategy. And I have them available, you know, so it, it, ah, it sucks. It sucks. <clears throat> and I don't know why. I don't know why distribution is like this now. On one hand, it's great to get things faster, but on the other hand, it sucks to have your entire budget screwed up because Hasbro isn't controlling the flow of product properly. It's not just that. I mean, it's, I mean that's, the, that's the frustrating element of it, right? But it's also the fact that you can't tell who's going to get it in first. Sometimes Pulse gets it in first. Sometimes Big Bag gets it in first. Sometimes Amazon gets it in first. So now you're, you're, you're basically just gambling. You know, you put your pre-order down, you hope for the best, or you're one of those crazy people that pre-orders everywhere, and whoever gets it in first, that's the one you keep. Um, <laughs> good luck if they come in at the same time, right? I don't know why this continues to be a problem. It throws off everything. You know, is it, is it, is it, you know, is it, is it bothersome? Yeah, it is. But my main complaint that he has that... He, 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 it just sounds like he doesn't know how to spend his money wisely. That, that's what it literally sounds like. He, he wants to have it all. And the whole argument, well, he, he's planning, apparently he's not planning well enough. He's not planning well enough. And I would expect somebody who has a business, I would expect somebody who has a business to to have more foresight and to, to realize that these pre-orders would possibly come in well before the, uh, the, the estimated time of arrival. And that's basically what these, these dates are. They're estimates. Hell let, let's, uh, let's see here. I don't think, let me see here because sometimes Ooh, let's go to Big Bad Toy Store. Let's see here. Um, let's see here. I pre-ordered a couple of figures from Big Bad Toy Store. Let's see here. Come on. Why is Big Bad Toy Store always so slow to load? Holy crap. Okay, let me pull up my account. Okay, I, I pre-ordered a couple items. The first item that I'm very excited to pre to have pre-ordered, or let me pull it up and then I'll show it to you, is, and then we'll do this. Let's do this. Hold on. Ah, wrong button. Um, B, B. Okay, so I pre-ordered uh, this guy. And what does it say here, ladies and gentlemen? Estimated to arrive, like right there. Estimated to arrive June two thousand twenty-five. These are just estimates, ladies and gentlemen. Even even if if you go like say to Amazon, that you know, and it says, let's see here. Uh, let's go to Amazon. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Transformers Legacy United. United. Oh, now wait. See, finally in. I was thinking about pre-ordering uh, this guy. Let's see here. Um. Oh, it's still temporarily asked. Oh, I was hoping it was going to be in. Motherfucker. Okay. Anyway. Okay. So let's look up uh, one of the ones that are that are scheduled for pre-order. Okay. So we we have. Legacy uh, United Leader Class Galaxy Shuttle. Yes, he, you know, it says February 3rd, but odds are this is just an estimate. Here, hold on, let me... This is just an estimate, ladies and gentlemen. How many times have we literally had a figure that was going to release, let's say, for example, let's say uh, June 4th, 
June 4th. And then you get an email uh, that says, congratulations, it moved, It has been moved up from June 4th to, let's say, March 5th or whatever. That's because these are just estimates. These dates that you see here. Hold on. These dates that... God damn it. These dates that you see here, it is literally just an estimate. It's just an estimate, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why I don't think that JT Omega understands is that th that this is literally, these are literally just estimates. It's impossible to plan a budget around being a Transformer collector right now. You know, you're just as well at this point, just wait until you see it in a normal store. You know, what's the point of a pre-order if, you know, you guarantee you get it, fine, but I want to get it when I expected to get it. Dude, it... <sighs> he, he doesn't understand that these are just estimates. He, 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 it sounds like he orders from Big Bad Toy Store. How is it that he orders from Big Bad Toy Store? How is it that he orders from Big Bad Toy Store and he doesn't realize that it says estimated to arrive June 2025? How does he not realize that? And I didn't want it to interfere with all the budgeting that I have to do in my private life and my professional life at the same time. You know, uh, can you tell how many times this has screwed me over? Can you tell how many times this has frustrated the hell out of me? And I know I'm not the only one. I know this is a lot of people right now. And it just seems like it's... You, you, you just roll with the dice, dude. As long as you're, as long as you're not having financial issues you shouldn't it should not bother you when these things release you know like i know it sounds weird of me to say that but if you're financially sound you, sh you shouldn't care when these things arrive absolutely fixable and i don't know why it's not so there you go a bad movie is one thing but this is a problem that's been persisting for over a year now. I want it fixed. So those are the top 10 disappointments I have in Transformers this year. I'm sure I didn't include all of them. Let me know which ones I missed in the comments below. And as always, I will see you next time. We parlay with the captain. You would think. Oh. Okay, so that was... That was my react to... Hold on, let's do this. That was my react to the here's 10 of Transformers biggest uh, disappointments in 2023. This was from TJ Omega. And maybe maybe I'm just uh, uh, an emotionless. No, I don't want to say emotionless. I'm just a callous person, I guess you could say. But I can understand a lot of what he was saying. But th that, that, the top one where he was talking about release dates. That seems to be more of, of an issue with him not being able to financially uh, be responsible enough. Like I said, if he was if he was able if he was financially sound, he should not have this issue where he literally has to kind of juggle. He has to juggle his resources. Oh wait 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 wait! That his, his finances are in such a perilous state that if one figure arrives or ships before the 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 estimated date then it throws all of his stuff off that 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 sounds like he's in trouble that sounds like he's in trouble you should not have to worry that if you get one toy it's going to just throw everything into chaos you shouldn't have to worry like that and the only reason that he's worrying like that is because odds are he's probably not making, you know, he's not financially stable. And if that's the case, then he needs to reevaluate what's most important in his life. Is conventions the most important thing? Is Transformers the most important thing? Is his business the most important thing? Is his family the most important thing? And then he needs to 
he needs to like reevaluate what he wants to do because apparently having a business having uh, a transformers collection having going to to conventions having a family apparently this is not working for him if like i said items if him getting a couple transformers just just throws everything into chaos just throws everything into chaos and before anybody asks i'm not i don't make buku bucks but like i said i financially plan out everything that's why i don't i don't go on vacations that's why i don't go on vacations because i know something like this could happen that's happening with him if i take a vacation and then all of a sudden a figure comes out oh well two hundred dollars scorpio docs coming in and i already i already i'm already planning a a five hundred dollar vacation to tahiti you know you got you know you got to you got to you're an adult you're an adult you got to figure out what is the most important ladies and gentlemen that, that's all he needs to do he needs to figure out what's most important okay that's it ladies and gentlemen as always if you like what you watch which i hope you did if anything you know you like transformers like i do you know you click on that subscribe button you know hold on let me turn this off there you go uh you like transformers click on the su subscribe button but that is it ladies and gentlemen i will see you next time for another g curse reacts and i guess that's it my name is jeff aka g curse aka g curse wishing you all a great day stay safe everybody peace out